Section 19 of Wessex Poems by Thomas Hardy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gone. The Burgers, 1700 something. The sun had wheeled from Grays to Danmer's crest, and still I mused on that thing imminent. At length I sought the high street to the west. The level flare raked pain and pediment and wrecked my face, and shaped my nearing friends like one of those the furnace held unshent. "'I've news concerning her,' he said. "'Attend. They fly to-night at the late moon's first gleam. Watch with thy steel. To righteous thrusts will end her shameless visions and his passion dream. I'll watch with thee to testify thy wrong, to aid, maybe. Law consecrates the scheme.' I started, and we paced the flags along, till I replied, Since it has come to this, I'll do it, but alone I can be strong. Three hours past curfew, when the Froom's mild hiss reigned sole, undulled by whir of merchandise. From Pummery Tout to where the gibbet is, I crossed my pleasance hard by Glidpath Rise, and stood beneath the wall. Eleven strokes went, and to the door they came contrariwise, and met in clasp so close I had but bent my lifted blade upon them to have let their two souls loose upon the firmament. But something held my arm. A moment yet, as pray time ere your wantons die, I said, and then they saw me. Swift her gaze was set with eye and cry of love illimited upon her heart king, Never upon me had she thrown look of love so thorough sped. At once she flung her faint form shieldingly on his, Against the vengeance of my vows, The witch or ruling, her shape shielded he. Blanked by such love I stood as in a drowse, In the slow moon edged from the upland nigh, My sad thoughts moving thus wise, I may house and I may husband her, Yet what am I? but licensed tyrant to this bonded pair. Says Charity, do as you would be done by. Hurling my iron to the bushes there, I bade them stay, and, as if brain and breast were passive, they walked with me to the stair. Inside the house none watched, and on we pressed before a mirror, in whose gleam I read her beauty, his, and mine own mien unblessed till at her room I turned. Madam, I said, have you the wherewithal for this? Pray speak. Love fills no cupboard. You'll need daily bread. We've nothing, sire, said she, and nothing seek. Twere base in me to rob my lord unware. Our hands will earn a pittance week by week. And next I saw she'd piled her raiment rare within the guard robes and her household purse, her jewels, and least lace of personal wear, and stood in homespun. Now grown wholly hers, I handed her the gold, her jewels and all, and him the choicest of her robes diverse. I'll take you to the doorway in the wall, and then adieu I to them. Friends, withdraw. They did so, and she went, beyond recall. And as I paused beneath the arch, I saw their moonlit figures, slow as in surprise, descend the slope and vanish on the hall. Fool, some will say, I thought, but who is wise save God alone to weigh my reasons why? Hast thou struck home, came the bow's night sighs. It was my friend, I have struck well, they fly but carry wounds that none can cicatrize. Not mortal, said he, lingering, worse, said I. End of section 19